and welcome to Epiphytic Cacti. So today we are going to look at Ripsalis trigona, the real Ripsalis trigona. But every single one of these plants that I have on this table here, I either purchased as Ripsalis trigona or someone thought it was Ripsalis trigona. So I figured we would take a close look at some of these to sort of help disqualify I think in your collections and stuff you know and even when you're shopping to help you figure out what is real and what is not. Ripsalis trigona is a Ripsalis that is not very often seen. So there's a couple of things that can disqualify a plant from being Ripsalis trigona right out of the gate. One of those things is definitely how many angles the growth has. So in general Ripsalis trigona has all three angled stems hence where its name came from. That is something that is very important to note. So anything that's like this, where it has some three angled growth, but then it's got two angled growth and, and it, it, it's weird and, and wait, well, that's not Rupsalis trigona. It's got all this two angled growth on it. There are several different Rupsalis macrantha that on site can be somewhat confusing and might look like Ripsalis trigona, particularly in pictures. But just the fact that this has all this two angled growth disqualifies it immediately. You don't even have to go any further than that. This one was really, really promising from the photographs, but you know, it, it looked like some pieces, maybe, like this is three angled. I don't know what's going on. That's three angled, but what's with all the hairs? What's with all the hairs on this growth? It's got like little, it's got like little tiny hairs coming out of the growth. And then, well, wait a second. This is two angled. Now oh, that's two angled. Oh, that's two angled, two angled. There's some three angled growth. Oh, I don't know what's going on with this, but it's two angled. And then all this growth down here, it's all two angled. Yeah, so we can just say not Ripsalis trigona. And this one was really, really, really convincing to you because check this out. It had like the most legitimate tag with the actual collection location or where the specimen came from. Not Ripsalis trigona. Womp womp. And this is one of those things where at this point you might be like, wait a second, why are all those things being mislabeled like that? Well, that would just be a mistake of identifying Ripsalis on site in the site alone without actually looking at any supplemental information about plant identification. So Ripsalis com of course is a wonderful resource but if you go and read you can almost immediately discount different plants so here this guy too the person that I bought it from they thought it was Ripsalis trigona we've obviously done a video on this plant this is actually Ripsalis macrantha kerbergii and I'm actually guessing the last two plants that we looked at are also some form of macrantha uh, macrantha is highly variable and it definitely can under certain circumstances take on a similar kind of appearance to Ripsalis trigona. Even the growth pattern is somewhat similar. It growing out in these kind of little whirls here where it's got three growths. I can actually tell you right now every single one of the growths that I'm looking at on this is three angled. Right now these are all three angled. If we go up though there's four angled growth here and in some cases there's even five angled growth. So that immediately just qualifies that. And the flower, because this has bloomed, the flower immediately disqualifies it as well. So even the growth, even though the growth pattern is similar, it's disqualified just immediately. So we can get rid of that one. I mean, not get rid of it because I'm actually pretty partial to that plant. There's nothing wrong with Rupsalis macrantha. It's just not Trigona. So one of these plants, is Ripsalis trigona. And these are the two that I would say, hands down, hands down, this would be the hardest to tell apart. Even in person, this might be a little bit difficult to tell apart, especially if you don't have them both. And both of these plants are pretty hard to get in the United States. So the one on the left is Ripsalis trigona. 
the one on the right is Rupsalis dismilis. And that one, very particularly in the United States, would have come under the name having form Mariariana. I think I said that right, because gosh, it's a mouthful. This is not an easy one to get in the United States. I found this on Etsy, and I'm pretty sure the person is still selling it on Etsy. So if you are after Rupsalis dismilis, I saw it on Etsy. Uh, maybe gone eventually, but that's that's where I found this one from. This one I had to hunt a lot. I didn't import it, but I did reach out to a private seller and ask the private seller for it, which is something I very rarely do. I very rarely reach out and ask private sellers for for plants or whatever, but this one I just could not find. So I went out of my way to get this plant, and in part because for identification reasons. So what's the big difference between these two plants? I don't know what kind of growing conditions this plant was kept in because this is legitimately just cuttings that I just received. But I wanted to make sure that I did this video because of how difficult it was to find the real Ripsalis trigona and how many wrong Ripsalis trigonas I had to go through to get to the real one. So this one really is just cutting, so don't be alarmed at the fact that I can pull these right out of here. So there are a couple of really, really distinct differences between these plants. Rosella strigona growth is three-angled. It's three-angled, like all of it. So it's not like there's a bunch of flat-angled branches or four-angled or five-angled or anything like that. It is solidly three-angled. So we can take a look at one of these because one of these was really interesting in how it was cut. That demonstrates this beautifully. There you go. You can see that that is a perfect triangle. I mean, a perfect triangle. So there are a couple of other really distinct things here. You can see that it's got these kind of um, lobes here a little bit that they kind of come out. See those little lobes? They're not huge lobes, but you can see kind of how they look and they almost kind of really kind of have an alternating kind of pattern. They're not uniform, you know what I mean? It's kind of like it lobes here and then it lobes here. There's something else I want to call out very specifically here because sometimes when it comes down to it and two plants can look this much alike, it comes down to tiny, tiny details. So one of the other things I want to point out about this is the aerials. Notice how they're not, they're like hidden. I mean, that is the tiniest, craziest little thing I've ever seen. And the scale is just so tiny. It's so tiny. You see what I'm saying? Like that is, I mean, that is just darn near invisible. Yeah, and you can see here that it's got growth that is, you know, it, it's not like the, the biggest growth in the world. And like I said, I don't know what kind of conditions this plant was grown in. And here you can see like a smaller growth. So the growth might be a little bit variable in size here, but I don't believe that Rupsalis trigona growth, this growth gets very long. I believe this stays always kind of consistently about this size. So that's another really good hint for being able to identify this one. One of the other things about this is, is if we look at the margins on the branches here. So you see the margin here, it is crisp. It is very crisp margin. We go here, it is a very crisp margin. You can see that it kind of twists a little bit, but that margin is super crisp. So that's another thing to note that can really help with identification on this one. So let's, let's kind of get a different one here. Something else I noticed about this is that the, see the little tufts of wool coming out of those aerials? is that it doesn't seem all that prominent. Like only two really old branches have that. And I would suspect that the reason why this has this is because it bloomed. But once again, very crisp sort of edges. This is a bigger branch. You can see about how big that is. I don't have giant hands. I have kind of smaller female hands. <laughs> <laughs> that was weird. But anyway, yeah, so see how crisp the edges, very crisp, very crisp. And again, you know, we see that kind of lobing pattern again. We look at all the aerials, even on the older branches, and you can see that there's just the little tiny white scale and it seems very kind of hidden. So 
The only reason why these have the tufts of wool, like I said, is probably because they have already bloomed. But see, even on the older branches, it's very hidden. So let's take a really close look at this Rupsalis dismillis form Mariarianum and see what the heck is the difference really here. So this plant is written and I can't just like go pulling things out of this one. But there's a couple of things that we can notice here is that most immediately the aerials. So most immediately, if you look at these aerials, they're actually quite, quite a bit like the scale that's on them is quite a bit larger and it appears to be red. But see, even on the young new growth, it is larger, it is more prominent, it appears to be red. Here's some growth there. You can see it's just way more prominent. It's not by any stretch of the imagine, imagination quite so invisible. So even if we took, let me grab one of these again so that we can kind of make that comparison. When we grab like an older branch here. So even on something that's a little bit older, see the difference in the aerials? See how one has that kind of prominent red scale? It's a little bit larger. So that can help you identify that. As well as when we look at these up close, the, the branch that we're looking at is kind of quasi three-angled. Like it's, it's, it's kind of three-angled. But notice the difference in the lobing pattern. It is a little bit different. And when you look at the margin between this is the Dragona margin versus the Dismillus margin, look at how soft it is. It's a very soft margin. And so that's kind of interesting too. That, that'll really help you kind of identify the difference between these. But there's something a little bit more, like even more than that. So you can see how some of the growth is kind of similar there, but we've already seen the difference in the scales and you can see just how, I mean, the scales are very prominent there at the aerials. So we can definitely see that. But as we're looking at some of this growth, like this new growth here, it, it's triangular-ish. So it's softer and it seems a little bit more round. It's a little bit more slender just in general. And some of the growth, like here again, you know, like this could be very easily confused with Dragona, especially because when you see the edges without seeing the other one, it looks like it might actually be a little bit sharper than it is, but it's not. But we, could, we get into some things like this, okay? So we're looking straight down at this guy, and what we're looking at is something that has four angles. That's not a three-angled growth. So then, you know, we kind of get down to... me. Yeah, I was trying to find one of these that... Whoops, I knocked one out. That was lovely. But we can look at this one here. So if we look at this one here... You know, again, you can see that it is like generally kind of three angled, but notice how much softer that is than the other one. So let me grab this Trigona again and look, I mean, you can see that it's just generally softer. So there's that, but there's also growth that's like this where, you know, again, that's damn near round. So if you have growths that are on there that are kind of roundish or, you know, four angledish, it's softer, that's probably Rupsalis dismillis, but there is something else that is distinct here. When we really get into it and we start looking at stuff like this, this growth is definitely quite a bit more round, but check this growth out. This growth right here is actually a five angled short kind of, I mean, it's five angled, so it's definitely more round, but there's something else interesting about this that I don't see anywhere on Trigona. See the soft spines, the little hairs at the aerials. So that is something else. If you have that on your plant, it is no doubt dismillis. And here, if we look at some of the other growth, that was a little bit, we can go to the other side of that too. There you go. See the little hairs, the little hairs. And then if we look at the main branch that's rooted for this one, I believe that that one is also five angled. So there's a way that you can kind of tell the difference there. And what's really interesting about Ripsalis dismillis, oops, all these cuttings are just falling out. <laughs> it's pretty funny. 
Now this hasn't bloomed yet. Like the Dragona hasn't bloomed yet, but I, I definitely am quite solid that that is Dragona. And I am definitely quite solid that that is Ripsalis dismillus marinarianum. I also have another Ripsalis dismillus here. And this one I imported from Germany. So this one just, whoops, just arrived from Ulig, Ulig Cactin and has only been rooting for a short period of time. However, even though this is probably a little bit desiccated or whatever, I still thought that this was a really good thing to look at. Because here you see that the problem with Rupsalis dismillus is how variable it is. So we have this clone in the United States, this one that we call Mariarianum. If we look at this one here again, you know, you can see that the growth here, these cuttings, it's very, very round. Most of these are very round. See how this is like, see how close the aerials are together as well? That is not something that is real prominent in Ripsalis trigona. It's, I mean, on like real small growth, yes, but like on the normal growth, no, it doesn't have very tight aerials like that. So one of the other really interesting things about this one is this growth. So this kind of caterpillary growth here, which is really interesting. And it is something that would definitely be able to tell Ripsalis trigona and Ripsalis dismillus part. <laughs> so if you have that caterpillary growth on a plant that looks like it might kind of be trigona, it, it's Ripsalis dismillus. Absolutely. Yeah, that is a definite marker that that's Ripsalis dismillus. So here we go again. With this beautiful, you know, we'll kind of look at some of these cuttings real up close. Again, the differences, see how prominent that edge is. See how tiny the aerial scales are. Even on this new growth, every single last one of these I checked. Every last one of them was triangular. These can twist too, so they can kind of twirl around. The growth will kind of twist sometimes a little bit. It's really pretty. There are some other distinct characteristics between Ripsalis trigona and Ripsalis dismillus that I can't really show because I would need blooms for that. But in general, the bloom for Ripsalis trigona is larger and it is generally more white. However, it can actually have the tinged pink petals and stuff like that. So the blooms just in photographs without size reference or without like a measuring tape or anything like that actually checking. And FYI, don't be afraid to bust out your measuring tape and start measuring your plants. Like for identification, you use ripsalis.com, check the measurements that they have in there and you can just start measuring your plants if you have doubts. I hope that you've enjoyed looking at the real Ripsalis Dragona with me. Thank you for watching and happy cacti growing.